I'm wearing my positive energy jumper because I want this to be a positive video. I want it to be a line in the sand. I want it to be the point at which we start to take a new direction. Welcome everybody and thank you for stopping by for today's video. I know I have a lot of new people in the community. Uh, so I'll just introduce myself quickly. My name is Christina. I am a certified nutrition specialist. I have, no, pause. No, don't pause it. I know I have lots of new eyes here in the community. I know I've got lots of new people in the community, so I want to introduce myself quickly. My name is Christina and I am a nutritionist and weight loss coach. I am also a certified ketogenic specialist. And I myself have been on a weight loss journey starting back in 2016 and I lost more than 100 pounds following a really low carb, high protein keto diet. Um, and over the last few weeks, I have stepped forward and given my experience expert opinion and personal experience on what it was like doing keto for almost two years of like really strict and then trying to maintain that weight loss uh, over the last few years. So it is 2022 now and I have ma managed to maintain around 80 pounds of the 100 pounds lost. I regained 20 and I fluctuate 20 to 25 pounds more than my original lowest weight. And no matter how, how strict I was, no matter how deep in ketosis I was, no matter how hard I went, no matter how long I went, no matter how much fasting I did, no matter how much exercise I did, my weight would not budge. And I just it just kept creeping up and up and up. So a few weeks ago, I put out this video and I'm gonna link it here if you, if you wanna watch it. Um, basically explaining how toxic diet culture has permeated even into the keto diet realm and has made it so that the, the majority of people who do keto at some stage, they stop losing weight, they start to plateau and then they even start to regain. And it's because of the approach that we have towards ketogenic diet. Now, if you look at it from that, that point of view, um, it's actually cortisol that is the big issue here. And that can be uh, exacerbated by a ketogenic diet. But I wanna talk about why keto is toxic diet culture. It's toxic diet culture personified. And I have experienced it in, in incredible, ways over the last few weeks since that video came out. So I started keto back in 2019 and at that time it was a fairly small community. We all kind of knew each other and it was just a group of people who were searching for the ways to make keto work for them. It was very much N equals one, meaning that we were all experimenting on ourselves. We were looking at the research and we were extrapolating the best way to do keto for ourselves out of that and it was basically the interpretation of studies the sharing of knowledge the discussion that got me really involved in the keto community but then shortly after that keto kind of blew up about a year after i was doing it keto blew up and all of a sudden it became more mainstream the community got bigger and bigger and bigger and there was more voices more opinions um, coming into the community and while that is great because we, we had a massive diversity then of people who had maybe differing opinions and different ways of doing things um, it started to become a problem when we started to see words like right wrong clean dirty um, all these rules this the dogma and it stopped being people who are assessing studies being able to critically assess them, um, take out the information that was worthwhile for them and their own body and discard the rest. And instead it became, you have to do it like this. And that doesn't work in nutrition. That doesn't work because we're all so fundamentally different, even our, down to our individual gut biomes, they're completely different. So what works for this person will not work for another person. Um, and we lost that critical assessment approach to the keto diet. And we all of a sudden got all these rules and regulations and there started the toxic diet culture. 
then there was keto royalty. Um, the doctors that were at the very top of the keto food chain who were giving all of the nutrition advice and how to do things. And of course, we know that one of the big problems with that is that, well, first of all, doctors are not always right. They don't know everything. Um, they don't always keep up with the latest studies. They don't always listen to their patients. I mean, it can take women seven to 10 years years to get an endometriosis diagnosis that's done really easily by a quick keyhole procedure seven to ten years so we know that when doctors start to give advice that it does require again a degree of critical thinking um, doctors are symptom solvers and keto does solve a lot of symptoms like and it is a very powerful tool for that but again it has to be done right and it has to be done right for the individual person i have worked with many women who have followed these doctors advice and have come to me even worse off feeling even worse having gained weight because they are prescriptive in how they address this and how they recommend that people do it and I have never had that approach my approach even when I was coaching for keto was to have um, a very individual approach some people can count total carbs some people can count net carbs some people can get away with a little bit of grain in their diet without any any detrimental issues some people were able to eat fruit and maintain their keto ketogenic state they were able to stay in ketosis even a bit of fruit so when we started to see all these rules and regulations and dogma and you must not do this you must not do that it really didn't sit well with me because I have been a victim of toxic diet culture and toxic weight loss culture for my entire life. I started Weight Watchers when I was 14. So I am an expert in toxic diet culture and I could see the red flags popping up all over the place with the descriptions people were using, like this clean and dirty. It's like, what is that? It's food. Like We shouldn't have these labels and then I started to see the harm that this prescriptive approach started to have on my community and with the clients who are coming to me for help the advice was generally keto harder keto longer fast more fast for longer um, get yourself into a deeper ketosis your ketones should be above two, three, four, five, six, whatever it was. It was just go at it harder, harder, harder. And we know, we know anecdotally, and we know from studies that the longer and harder you calorie restrict, you restrict certain food groups, you, um, you fast, the worse off you become in terms of health. Like everything else with keto and fasting and everything else, there is... A certain point you get to where it's just it becomes too much and it starts to swing in the other direction and it was around that time that I saw keto start to swing in the opposite direction so in July 2018 I traveled to Connecticut for the keto fest um, get-together and it was basically the, that original keto community that I had been a part of back in 2016 and we all knew each other and um, everybody knew each other's names and we got together to discuss all things keto and again the keto royalty were there and it was the same faces the same messages the same information spewed out over and over and over again that I've seen every year since then with like low carb San Diego and uh, the one that's in um in Denver, I can't remember the name of it, but it's the same information, it's the same people saying the same things. But there's no, there was there is, and it's great information, it's really, really powerful information, and it's really important to understand it, but the actual applying it of, to our bodies was completely lost. So it was around that time, back in 2018, when I started to have issues with plateau. I had been plateaued for about a year by then, I hadn't lost any more weight and of course I was still a good 30 pounds off my ideal body weight and now my ideal body weight should be 130 pounds but I'm like 
170 is like my Goldilocks zone. So at that point, I had reached my Goldilocks zone of 174, 175 pounds, I think. And then I had gone back up again and I was starting to get a little bit worried. So at KetoFest, I, I had a VIP ticket, which meant that I got to talk with all of this keto royalty and I got to mingle with them at, at the... Um, at one of the um, organizers' houses. So I managed to corner one of the most well-known keto dudes in um, in the keto sphere. Um, and he is extremely well-known. And I, I started to talk to him and I said, look, I don't know what's going on with me. Here, here's my story. I lost this amount of weight. I got to my lowest weight. And no, even though I didn't change anything I was doing, nothing at all, didn't change what I was eating, didn't change my exercise, didn't change anything, my weight is going up. What's going on? It's like, well, it happens to everybody. It's the first thing that it was told. It's like, okay. So a plateau happens to everybody and everybody starts to regain a little bit. Okay, that's concerning. I said, but what do I do about it? It's nothing, just keep going. It's like, well, but it's not working. Like, why has it stopped working? And I was just told keto one. Uh, that's very helpful. Thank you. N there was no, um, no reasoning. There, there, there was no, um, admitting, I don't know what's happening. I, I don't know why it happens. Um, it happens to many people, but all we can do is just continue on. And it's like that kind of advice from that person, and I'm not going to name him, um, because this, it's not about that. It's about this per pervasive message of do it harder, do it longer, do it faster. Um, so this message of keto one, even though it's not working, really didn't sit right with me. And I left keto fest feeling very deflated. Um, I, I left keto fest feeling like I was doing something wrong. I was missing something that it had worked for for so long and then it, it just stopped working and it didn't work anymore and the advice to keto harder is what I took home and what I did which obviously now I know only exacerbated the problem so when I put out that video a few weeks ago the keto community felt personally attacked and that to me just proves that they are eyebrows deep up here in dogma because when somebody questions your dogma you can feel like it's a personal attack and this was perceived as a personal attack <laughs> given the the messages that i got and um and the very personal insults i got for some reason but anyway we're not here to talk about that there were some who came forward to me and said from the keto royalty and said look there's no there's no way that keto can can harm your, your thyroid or metabolism. And I said, okay, then what did? And they said, well, you must have been doing it wrong. It's like, sorry, I'm a certified ketogenic specialist. I did my training with Tim Noakes. I know how to do keto, right? Um, and they said, right, okay, so it's not that. Is it, were you doing this? No. Were you doing that? No. Were you doing this? No. And it went on and on, back and forth, back and forth, with, with quite a few of them, actually. Um, and a lot of them threw studies at me. And one in particular, one particularly memorable one was somebody who sent me an article written by um, Stephen Finney, I think, on the Verta website, talking about keto and thyroid and he said read the study like read a study so I was like okay uh, of course I'm going to read the study like I'll come back to you so I went in and I read this article and the study that was cited in the article is their own study <laughs> that was done on 12 healthy young men on a ketogenic diet for six weeks 12 healthy young men on a ketogenic for diet for 12 weeks is not 35 plus woman with thyroid issues uh, who has been morbidly obese the significant portion of her life and um, has lost the weight and has been on keto for four years. Nobody, not one person could come to me with a study that wasn't easy to pick apart, that wasn't um, built on shaky foundations. I mean, if I came, if I came to say I'm, I'm in charge of a company that 
sells um, weight loss injections, right? Say, say this is me. And I'm talking about how these weight loss injections are not gonna have any detrimental effect on your metabolism. How do I know? Because I paid for a study to be done about my product and it proved that it's safe. Are you gonna believe that? Of course you're not gonna believe that. It's like Coca-Cola paying for a study that says sugar is okay. Um, it's like um, Monsanto paying for a study that says that Roundup is not gonna kill us all. Yeah, sure, yeah, you're gonna believe that. So this person wanted me to say I was wrong because a study done on 12 healthy young men for six weeks showed, didn't support what I was saying. I'm sorry, no. And then the amount of them that were studies done on mice, and while mice have some of the same metabolic pathways as humans, it's not human. It's not got human um, biochemistry. It's not got human gut biome. It's not got human hormone cycles. It's just not human. So when you can, when you come to me with a study that's been done on women 35 plus who either have a tendency towards or have actually been diagnosed with a thyroid issue, or maybe even not, who have been on keto for more than one year straight, come back to me with those results. Come back to me with those and then I will listen. And then I will say, okay, so maybe we're onto something and we need to look to see if there's something else. Now I will continue that work myself. I will continue to see um, if there are studies out there that disprove my theory of the cortisol keto issue because it that's the only thing that it can be. Um, and like somebody is saying to me that there's no mechanism for keto to harm your thyroid. Well, yeah, there is. It's not direct. It's via cortisol. Um, and this person was saying, well, cortisol isn't raised that high on keto. You don't need high cortisol to be in ketosis. Well, maybe not. But my body's been morbidly obese for the very the majority of my life for a very long time, that's going to increase cortisol. I was insulin resistant, res increases cortisol. I've had really bad anxiety my entire life, raises cortisol. I did a, an extreme weight loss in more than, in, in a little under a year. That again, exacerbates cortisol. All signs point to cortisol. And you know, Occam's razor, if it is the most likely thing, then that's probably what it is. And in this case, it is cortisol. Now, this person said that they knew that what, what was wrong with me. Um, and I said, right, okay, so tell me what it is and I'll go and fix it and see if it works. I'll go back into ketosis, I'll do it that way and I'll see if it works. And they never came back to me because they can't, they cannot conclusively disprove what I'm saying because the science doesn't back it up. Their own science, the 12 healthy young men is not a 35, 45 plus woman who has or is morbidly obese or even obese or overweight, who has these hormone um, issues, who has maybe thyroid issues in the past. No, 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 I'm sorry. We know historically that the science doesn't favor women. And in this case, it absolutely didn't because not one study was done on women. <laughs> Not one. Um, so um, this this person who sent me this um, reference, this the um, the blog post which referenced their own study, um, didn't come back to me either when I pointed out that you know that you want me to to take this as proof that keto doesn't have any impact on cortisol or thyroid. No, I'm sorry. This is not worth the paper it's written on in terms of my experience and the experience of like at this stage I'm into the 600 probably people who have come to me um, messages DMs emails with the same issue and it's the exact same issue it's no different weight loss weight loss stops plateau weight regain all of the symptoms and the amount of people who told me that I was perimenopausal, I'm, I'm sorry, perimenopause symptoms don't go away when you add carbs back into your diet. All of my symptoms have practically gone. I'm warm all the time, like I have rosy cheeks. Like I have no makeup on. I have a bit of mascara and, and a little bit of eyeshadow on, but other than that, I have no makeup on. And I feel warm, like I actually feel warm to the touch for the first time in years. So that is a clear sign that my thyroid is starting to recover, my metabolism is starting to recover. And this is an important point, it can recover. 
So back to the toxic diet culture. The dogma has just been staggering to witness. Um, I've also been told to leave the nutrition advice to the qualified doctors um, because doctors are never wrong, right? We know that. We know that well. Um, I was even told to leave the nutrition advice up to Dr. Berg. Now, why a chiropractor is more qualified to give nutrition advice than a qualified nutritionist, I don't know. I don't know. But what really struck me was these people wanted to prove me wrong, wanted to shout me down. They weren't willing to listen. They weren't open to learning about these possibilities. Now, there were so many more people that were. There were so many pe more people that were open to this and open to the suggestions that I was making, there was people commenting saying, well, I was about to start keto, but I'm actually going to see if I can do it in such a way that it, this won't happen to me. And that's entirely possible. Where we get into the toxic diet culture is that nobody, nobody is saying that keto must be done cyclical. There are people out there talking about it, but these keto royalty say just keep going towards the end, keep going till you get to your goal weight. That doesn't work. That never works. It never works in any diet, in any weight loss program. Even in my own program, the Protein Priority Diet, we don't do that. We practice reverse dieting because if you continue on a calorie deficit for a long time, it has these detrimental effects. So we don't do that. Um, this message of keto longer, keto harder, keto better. I mean, I'm going to read out the list of things that were said to me. And I'm looking at my screen here. I'm going to read out the list of things that were said to me that it was, um, how it was my fault. Um, okay. So here's the list. Um, I ate too little. I ate too much. I didn't eat enough fat. I didn't eat enough protein. I ate too much protein. I ate too often. I didn't eat often enough. <laughs> I didn't exercise, I didn't fast, I didn't fast long enough, I fasted too often, I wasn't doing keto right, I didn't do carnivore for long enough, and I didn't listen to the male doctors. Literally, I made a list every time somebody said it was something else. Now, none of that, of course, is true. Um, I was trained in keto by, uh, um, by doctors. I took uh, the, the certified programs, um, and this is just toxic diet culture you didn't do it long enough, you didn't do it hard enough, you didn't do it fast enough. Um, and it's exactly like Weight Watchers. You have to do Weight Watchers, go, 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 until you get to your goal weight, and then you're just left to try and maintain that, and it's virtually impossible. Same with Slimming World, same with all the top um, weight loss programs. Um, so what I want you to do for me right now is a little bit of a thought exercise, okay? Think about the most well-known people in the keto community. Right, the ones that are out there on social media, the ones that are out there on YouTube, me included. I want you to include me in this. Um, the ones that are out there on Instagram, um, giving all of the information. The ones that especially have been morbidly obese or obese, okay? You know, a, a lot of them. How many of them actually reach their goal weight? Very few. How many of them manage to maintain that goal weight? Even less. How many regained weight? Quite a few. Um, and what can you conclude from that? The ones who say longer, harder, faster, have they managed to do it? Overwhelmingly, no. I mean, there are some out there who have managed it and who have managed to keep the weight off. And they're the ones that keto really works for. But the ones like me and the others who stopped before they got to their goal weight and maybe regained a little bit, those are the ones who are having the same issue as me, but they're just not talking about it. Toxic diet culture is restriction, restriction, denial, restriction, guilt, shame, um, all of that. It's your fault. It's your fault you're like this. So that list uh, that I just read out, that was toxic diet culture glorified. 
It's my fault that it didn't work for me. It's my fault. I didn't listen. I didn't learn. I wasn't educated enough. I wasn't smart enough. I didn't interpret the signs right. I didn't follow the rules exactly. That is toxic diet culture. And I am done with it. I am done, done, done with it. Um, I didn't think back in 2016 that the, that the ketogenic diet would ever fall foul of toxic diet culture because it was such a rich environment to be in. Those Facebook groups were amazing. They had um, such amazing discussions, um, debates as well, where people were coming with different scientific studies, different points of view. And it was just a really rich environment to be a part of. But of course, when something goes mainstream like that, you um, you have a lot more people and a lot more voices. Um, and I saw, back in 2019, I saw the toxic diet culture, toxic weight loss culture, start to creep into those keto communities. I got kicked out of a keto Facebook group for telling a woman that was suffering from horrendous PMS symptoms, really, really bad, for telling her to eat some carbs to help with hormonal balance. And I was talking about carrots and peas and onions. I wasn't telling the woman to go and have a donut. I got kicked out of that group for recommending that she have slightly higher carb days just before her cycle starts. Who got fat? eating peas and carrots. Who? None of us. Absolutely none of us. So when it got to that point of, when I got kicked out of that Facebook group, when I saw what I had become, these rigid dogmatic rules where you had to do it like this or you weren't doing it right, is when I decided that I was gonna move away from it. And in 2020 is when I announced that I was moving away from focusing on keto because I was sick to my stomach of looking at the toxic diet culture in full play in those Facebook groups and the people suffering because they were having horrendous carb cravings and they weren't able to add a little bit of carb because otherwise they weren't doing it right. Um, and we now know that some carbohydrate is really healthy for hormonal balance especially the thyroid um, and when I mean car when I say carbohydrate I'm talking about insulin we need insulin flat insulin is not the goal healthy insulin spikes is the goal we need insulin insulin keeps cortisol under control cortisol blocks the thyroid from working properly and stops hormones from working properly we need insulin ergo we need some carbohydrate you know they always say there's no such thing as an essential carb well that's right it in essence that's right the food group itself the macro of carbohydrate we absolutely need some um you don't may not need it all the time you certainly don't need three four hundred grams of protein a day or <laughs> protein protein on my brain of carbs every day but some carbohydrate that is glucose friendly in terms of like the spikes that you get is absolutely essential for proper hormonal health. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just reference it quickly for anybody who doesn't understand what I'm talking about. Um, when you are in ketosis, you need cortisol to be able to create glucose and ketones to keep you alive. Your body can produce all the glucose you ever need to keep yourself alive. However, that doesn't mean healthy right it doesn't mean healthy we need a certain amount of carbohydrate to keep certain hormones in balance to keep cortisol low to let the thyroid do its thing and in order for that to happen we need some carbohydrate in our diets do we need it every day i don't know um do we need it regularly i'd say yes in my expert opinion we do um all of those symptoms that i've had and i'll leave a, a link in the description to the blog post that i wrote about this you can read all of my symptoms have gone away. Now that doesn't happen if there isn't some truth in what I'm saying. If it wasn't keto, if it wasn't cortisol, I wouldn't feel any better adding a little bit of carbs. And I'm talking 60 to 100 grams a day. That's it. Like it's not even that high. I'm not doing high carb. My weight is completely stable. I have increased my calories 
Um, I've increased my calories. I used to only be able to eat kind of 1200 a day before I'd start to gain weight. I'm up at about 14 to 1600 calories a day and I'm aiming for around two. So that once I get my metabolism back up to two, I can do a short cut and come back again. And that's the way the protein priority diet, which is my program that I developed, that's the way it's set up. It's a pro-metabolic program, meaning that you only do a calorie cut for 30 days. That's all you're allowed to do. And then you do reverse dieting for one, two or three weeks, and then you go back into another calorie cut. That's pro-metabolic eating. We eat protein first, the clues in the name, protein priority. We eat protein first because protein is pro-metabolic. It increases your metabolic rate, especially if you eat a protein priority meal first thing in the morning and you eat protein first at every meal. It's pro-metabolic. It's weight loss with a healthy metabolism. This protects against the damage done by long-term calorie restriction and long-term high cortisol that's needed to maintain a stressful thing like weight loss. And that's one of the things that are missing from this bigger picture of keto can't cause cortisol issues. It's an addition. High stress lives that we have, weight loss, weight gain, insulin resistance, um, add keto into that, add exercising while fasted, add, add fasting into that, all of those things, right? That's seven things that cause cortisol to be raised. So this causes it to be raised and then that causes it to be raised and then that causes it and, then, and, that, and that. And then you've got high cortisol, which blocks thyroid function, okay? So in order to do um, healthy weight loss, healthy, sustainable, maintainable, and pro-metabolic weight loss, we need to eat in this reverse dieting way. We need to restrict our calories for a very short period of time and then do reverse dieting. I also make sure in my community that we focus on nutrition, we focus on whole food, and we focus on basic health um, uh, approaches like good quality sleep, making sure you're fully hydrated. And we do work on mindset too, because it's all this big picture. I do not allow weight loss at any cost in my program. We do not allow that. That's not part of our philosophy. In fact, our motto is done, not perfect, because perfect doesn't exist, especially when it comes to nutrition. Um, we aren't dogmatic and I have built flexibility and adaptability into the program so that you can find what works for you. You can find how much to eat, how little to eat you before you start to have um, any detrimental effects, the, what kind of macros to eat. You're prioritizing protein, but you can eat carbs and fats in whatever ratio you like. And as long as you are doing it within your calorie allowance, you're not gonna gain weight. We eat to our maintenance calories during our reverse diet um, period. And that helps keep our metabolism high. Because remember, the more you restrict, the slower your metabolism gets because it can't keep continue to overspend when you're not getting anything in. Um, and so reverse dieting helps to fix that because you're maintaining a higher metabolism and then you're cutting back for a little bit. But before your body starts to cut back, you're bringing it back up again. So even in your calorie cut period, your body is still up at burning 2000 calories, you might be eating 1200, so you've got big deficit there, but it's not a chronic deficit and it's not a stressful deficit. That was easy for me, was easy for me to say. It's not a stressful deficit because you're going to be eating more to maintain your metabolism. And it is literally the anti toxic diet culture, to toxic weight loss culture program. And it's taken me, it's taken me five years to come to that conclusion um and i'm very proud of my program because it gets great results but of course everybody wants fast results everybody wants like dramatic results which keto do and the problem with that is you get kind of addicted to that and you you want more 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 because that's what you're told weight loss should be like it should be quick it should be um it should be linear, it should, you should be losing two pounds every month or every week or whatever it is. And we have all of these expectations and our bodies just, our bodies just aren't built like that. Um, so 
toxic diet culture is what has caused us all the problems and continues to cause the problems and that's why I walked away from the keto community and that's why I will never be back in the keto community I'm not contributing to toxic diet culture um I do teach keto I have clients that I'm working with that are, are on ketogenic diet because I'm a keto coach I'm a low carb specialist I'm a nutritionist that's what I do I do a, a weight loss I'm a weight loss coach a weight loss nutritionist but we do keto in a way that's absolutely sustainable protects the metabolism protects the thyroid and especially for women protects the hormonal balance and it's really really important right so this is not and my videos have never have been an anti-keto it's anti-toxic diet culture um, and i want everybody to be able to take the information that i share that all these keto royalty people share and to be able to take away from it what works for you because it doesn't work for everybody in the same way and there are so many variations of the ketogenic diet that work um there are so many variations of weight loss programs so you need to find what works for you and you need to find the right community that is understanding and sympathetic and doesn't encourage weight loss at any cost and it's difficult for me as a weight loss coach trying to market my own weight loss program it's hard for me to do because I will never perpetuate that toxic diet weight loss culture. I will never perpetuate it. I will never um, sink to that for the almighty dollar. I never would. I have my standards. I have my morals. And it, it's just not something that interests me. My community and helping people are more important than making a book. Um, my program is $20. Like it... it I'm not here saying, right, give me two grand and I'll, I'll fix I'll fix you up, right up. I mean, I could easily say, right, I can help you lose 100 pounds in a year. Give me $5,000 and I will do that for you. But I'll wreck your body in the meantime, just like every other weight loss program. My program doesn't do that and I will never do that. But it's hard to say, hey, you come on my program, you lose weight. That's what I do. But we do it in a pro-metabolic way. We do it in a healthy way. We do it in um, an, an anti-toxic diet culture way. There's no weight loss at any cost. And we focus on nutrition and whole food. Um, it's not restrictive. It's hard to market that without sounding like just another one of those coaches who's promising the world and telling you that you need to do X, Y, Z. And a, a lot of people struggle when when they're told well you know you have to work these things out for yourself you have to find what works for you but it's the only way to make sure that you can have long-term health and start to move away from that toxic diet culture that toxic weight loss culture and if you choose to continue to do keto um then you know having this information and knowing that maybe what you're being told is not 100% right for you it's really important so that you can go find what works for you because ultimately at the end of the day that's all I want that's why I produce these videos that's why I run my program that's why I take on clients because I want to help I want to help people do what I did lose the weight but do it in a way that they don't end up with the same struggles that I did um so I feel like this should have been like um a TED talk of some sort but um if you've been a victim of toxic diet culture then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about um like I said in my last video and I'll link it up here dogma has no place in nutrition because dogma is what got us all into this mess in the first place and more dogma is not going to get us out so if you're interested in how to do keto properly um, I have created a free Facebook group and I'll put a, put the link in the description um, to help people with rec metabolic recovery after long-term keto and long-term fasting because there is a right way to do it and there's a way that you can do it that will support your goals and support your health and your metabolism at the same time. Just hard, harder, faster, longer is not the way to do it. 
Um, so I created this free Facebook group and it's brand new. So I've just been kind of helping people get get into the group, start the discussion about you know th- their experiences. And um, in it, then I'm going to be sharing like the metabolic recovery tips and tricks for doing keto and fasting without um, damaging your metabolism, damaging your thyroid. Um, and the thing to remember is if you recognize yourself in anything that I've been talking about over the last few weeks, it's fixable, right? We can fix this, but we have to fix it together. And the thing that you need to do is have patience because you're probably going to have to gain a little bit of weight in order to be able to fix this. But it's like I say to um, to the protein priority diet group, when, when we do live coaching, I always say, you need to think of this like your pension plan. It's going to be a little bit painful that you have to put in a little bit more, in this case, gain a little bit of weight. Uh, but ultimately it's going to pay off because you'll have even more when you retire. So literally like you're, you'll end up losing more weight and keeping it off in a healthy, sustainable and manageable way instead of restricting and then restricting and then restricting and then restricting because you just can't keep the weight off when you get towards your goal. So I hope that this is our line in the sand and that If you are an active member of the keto community and you really believe in the program that you'll start to call out this dogma, you'll start to call out the rules, um, you'll start to question the people who are advising to do things in a strict, restrictive way, um, that are not open to discussion, that are not open to the fact that um, some people are able to do things in a different way and it works just as well for them. Um, and if you are not part of my community yet, please do come join one of my free Facebook groups or sign up for my newsletter on my website. All the links are down in the description. And if you are not subscribed, I would love to have you as part of the community for a little bit longer. And when you're subscribed and you hit the little bell, you'll get a notification when I upload a video. Um, I will be live in my free Facebook group, Weight Loss with Christina. It's again, there's a link in the description for it. Every single Wednesday, I go live in the Facebook group to just chat about all things weight loss. It's a general weight loss group. Um, And just to answer any questions I have about that week's video or answer general weight loss questions. So if you're interested in getting some free advice and some free coaching, um, make sure you come and join that Facebook group. So thank you to everybody who left comments, supportive comments to me. It was just so wonderful to read them. I haven't got replied to everybody, unfortunately, because it's just I was just completely overwhelmed. I think there's more than 1,000 comments on that last video, um, the, the first video, I should say, about keto. So thank you to everybody who shared their story with me, who reached out to me via email, and who commented to say that, you know, that although you don't you don't agree you understand that this is my experience it's been extremely helpful as well for people to see that there are people out there who can do keto and not have any issues with it because again dogma has no place here dogma has no place in in nutrition dogma is dangerous in nutrition so i'll leave you with that um and hopefully i'll see you back here next week for another video take care